Hello and welcome to another demonstration. If you're in the premiere, I'll be in the chat so I can answer any questions or just say hello. Today I'm going to be using alcohol inks and I'm using the piñata alcohol inks. So these are ethanol based rather than isopropyl, which makes them a lot brighter. Um, and you do need an ethanol alcohol, which works better with it. Isopropyl will, but you might find things go grainy. So these are the piñata. They are dye based. Because they're dye based, they tend to fade in light. But like any good practice, you just don't put things in direct sunlight for long periods or like that. And they have a pretty good life. I've used them over years and I have things hung up around the building, not in direct sunlight. And they're still absolutely fine. So I'm going to do a lioness and she looks quite grumpy in the original picture, which I thought was quite fun. And I'm just going to see how controlled I can get and what effects I can get on this wet media UPO surface. Now, a couple of ways to use alcohol inks. I'm just going to drop a bit onto a palette and it does dry quite quickly. Or I'm just going to drop a little bit onto the surface, but I know it moves very quickly. So I'm a little more dubious about that. See, I can push it with my brush and control it a little bit. You'll see I've used a pencil on the surface. It does take a soft pencil, so a 3B, 4B, much easier than a, a hard pencil. Looking nice already. Just So brushing it on, it doesn't move as much. I have much more control. Dropping it on, it does just tend to bleed and bloom, as the effect I call it. So I just have to be mindful when I'm putting it on. And you'll also see lots of different effects when I drop in other colours. Just giving it a base of the yellow as a starting point, because this is the predominant colour. See how bright the colour is as well? That's another beauty of using alcoholics, they're really bright. Tangerine, that's probably an orange. It's not a bright orange, which is great. So I can use this now to just to start putting in a bit more detail and it does move a little bit on the initial layer of alcohol inks but the great thing about this is it does actually I can correct things very easily I can take things out I can move things. But I do hear a lot of people say that they have a lot of trouble using alcohol inks because of their lack of control and that the way that they move. I just like that they do have some of that quality. I'm just trying to control and see how far I can control it. So put it on with a brush. You can see there, I'm able to use it very much like a paint. It's not going everywhere. Let me try a little drop of colour on the nose. The reason being, it's a bit darker. Look at that, a little bit there. I'm going to use that characteristic for some of the textures. You can see I can use my brush as well just to manipulate and decide where I need it to go. Just bring out the eye so I remember where it is. Okay. 
look what happens when I drop in some yellow on the top of that. Okay. You can see the lighter colour pushing the darker colour away. So just blend into that while it's still wet. You can see I can blend that darker colour in. And there, just take away that harsh edge that it's created. Soften. So it's just a case of manipulating the ink on the surface. Go back in with the yellow. It's hard, so it's still moving. The, th the thing about it is that it will keep moving afterwards so you do have to maybe possibly go back in i'm going to put a bit more yellow at the top here just push that in and what i do find is that it's actually quite easy to contaminate your colors and i'm going to use it in this case to my advantage so my brush will take a, quite a bit of cleaning. Now I've got that orange on. Um, but luckily I'm not using too many colours. So if I did go into a very different colour with a brush, I'd have to make sure my brush is clean, which is sometimes why I will have a few brushes. Now these are inexpensive synthetic brushes. Reason they're using the inexpensive ones because I'll probably use more than one. I've got another one there. Just because it is a bit of a problem to clean them each time bet between colour applications. It's not like you can swirl it in water. I can swirl it in the um, clean-up solution, but that clean-up solution then gets quite grubby very quickly. That's, so that's why I will have different brushes. Look at that. I don't like that, but I can blend it. And once it's dry, it is waterproof. It's indelible. So people will use it on tiles, on china. Um, I've eaten plastic. Um anything that it would that's non-porous pretty much quite like that effect right let's blend this out a bit so i want to blend this out and it's dried two ways i could do it is one i could put some color on the palette and use some of that wet color which i will try And you can see that just blends it in a little bit more. Or another way is to use, I might use that down there because I want some light on it. You can either use up the clean up solution, but that is um, a little bit more harsh. And it depends on your surface. Say you're doing it on canvas and you use this a lot rather than the Claro you may find that your layer of alcohol ink may peel. I have never had it happen, um, but because this has got no adhesive properties, if you dilute it a lot with this, you're just literally getting a lot of non-adhesive alcohol with less um, dye. Whereas with this, it's got some glycerin in, so therefore it is adhesive, so you can thin it as much as you want with this, and it will still, to the surface. Like I say, I use both and I've never really had an issue. But that is just clean colour. You can see how that lightens and I can lift back and use that to lighten. So that colour is still a bit yellow. Let's, let's go in and see what I can do. Let's take the ear.
quite like that effect at the moment. So I'm going to put some of that clean solution there because it's lightest. Let's see if I can put in colour a little bit more subtly. See what I can blend into. There we go. My brush is cleaning itself, which is great. I'm able to pick up colour from other areas and move it. But I do want to get that speckly effect as well. I, I'm going to use that speckly effect that you get from dropping in the alcohol because I think it's a, a nice characteristic of the ink. Uh, also, it dries on your palette and I can't reactivate with water because they're indelible, but easily to reactivate with um, clean up solution or the claro. Right, let me look at some darker areas. I'm going to go in with a dark colour. What colour are you? Let's try that. You don't need a lot because it does go quite a long way. Okay. So he's got some. It's not dark enough, so it's not the colour I want. Might as well do sangria. better as the colour I'm looking for. So let's just darken here. So I find there's a lot of putting it on and then manipulating it a little bit. As the ink moves at its own pace. I'm going to use a touch of black just because I want to darken inside the ear. And I think that's the darkest I will have. Dark just there. I've mixed it with that brown because I don't want it black too dark. Okay. My brush is quite contaminated so let's try and clean off. What I do tend to do is I tend to put a little bit of the claro in the corner and lift it from there. under here where there's a fold under the ear. Take that up. There. And then around the eyes. Let's just bring out they always have a little bit of a frown. Same on this side. Under the eye, it's light, but inside the eye, it's dark. So let's see what I can do here. So putting it on with a brush, I can have that control. It doesn't seem to bleed. What it may do here is bleed because some of that ink is wet. Like I say, you can control and manipulate and go back in and lift it off. Right, a bit of that clean solution here so I can thin out.
So like you would do with a watercolour, you can work with a cleaner brush and just move the colour back in with that clean up the claro. You can see how I can just lighten dark again. Let's look at this side, so it's darker on here. It's going to go a bit wet because I want it to move. Okay. Just use that characteristics of this ink to create the texture. Look at that, isn't that nice? Again, up the nose, I think. Do the same up the nose. And that's just making the ink a little wetter so it moves. Just shake that face. Face isn't quite as harsh as I'll have it there. And here is darker. So it is always a little interesting because you, you can't always tell what, where it's going. You just have to be relaxed about putting it on and then you can solve any areas which are really not working. Right, so this bit more of that claro to wet it a bit up here. So let's go around the eye. Take that off a bit. It has some shading down the nose here. Harsh lines you may not like. So take those out. And the ear. So we've got their ears laying flat. Like I say, not a happy. Just a bit angry with that something. Probably because people were staring at them. Going, no need for that. Do the eye. I have been avoiding it to be honest. Let me change to a cleaner brush and a cleaner area. So put some in that corner. Clean. Because I know it's going to move. So I'm just being careful. Pick up some yellow. Leave that for now, come back to it. So where's that cleaner area? So what I can do is I can lighten Don't want that light on that air side, but I can do it just under here. It's light in there. There's a bit of light. See how this is lightening, just using that. Claro. You can also put in a bit of detail. It's got to be a little bit careful because like I say, it does contaminate the brush. Let's go back to that much dirtier brush before that gets too dirty. Fill in some of the darker areas. The side of this face needs to be darker. And the nose is much darker along here.
dark across the nose. I'm just loving those really textured effects that you get. Drop some claro in so I can pick up. Kind of use it a little bit like I would water when I'm picking up a colour. Mix it with some light red because it's a bit too brown. I'm avoiding doing the eye, so let's do it. Let's put some. It's a bit too harsh, I'm just dropping in some so it blends better. I can put some orange underneath just so it darkens up. Okay, same here, just need to darken. Doesn't mean that they're finished because I can still go in this darkness around the edge. Strengthen that. I haven't I've got I've got a pinky for the nose. What colour is that? Because the colour is quite intense to start with, you can't actually see the colour until you thin it. Okay. While I've got that, I'm gonna just Less harsh. <laughs> the corner, I'm running out of corners to keep my claro clean. So you can see I can go back in, just lighten that a little bit, pick up some of the highlights over the eye, that light bit over the eye, maybe a bit of light across there. Not got enough shadow on this side. It's a bit muddy, so let me brighten that up. Pick 
up some of the claro, pick up some of the colour. I think it needs a little bit lightening up the nose here. Definitely, there's a bit around the eye. Um, that side didn't work, but I can do it again. That's the beauty of this. You can actually keep manipulating it until you've got the effect you're looking for. See there, lightening that. I do need to clean my brush in between. I need to let that dry. Right, let's just lighten up the nose a bit. See how it changes every time? And I know with the watercolour you can't do this kind of manipulation of the paint because it was the paper won't allow it because um, it's it's fixed to it and then it starts to get muddy this can get muddy I'm not saying that it doesn't I just love the way you can kind of go, no, I've gone a bit too hard in there. I'm not sure where it's going. Let's just bring it back. Got the nose quite defined enough so it goes up here. Right, so is that I might use that purple. See what that does. It's quite dark. Can I bring that back? Yes. I don't like Definitely want to put in these details. We did that are definitely a bit too muddy on the top, so let's just see what I can do with yellow. Clean that up a bit. Line, so I will blend them in. Bring them down. That's definitely brightened that area up a bit more. And again, I might brighten, but I don't think I'll use yellow. I use orange, I think. Let's see what happens. Where's that claro corner? Clean. Right, it's light across here. I can 
to see that needs to be Convenient in letting the ink do its own thing. Definitely like that colour there more. orange in there so put a bit in there oops a bit too much no nope, I like that and let's take some areas I want to brighten up oops just take that I know that looks a little harsh, but I think with some clean-up solution, that's going to brighten it. Without taking that colour away. Yes, I know that's bled over, but I, again, I can fix that. I just really want that quality of the alcohol inks with a little bit more control and show how it can be manipulated and you can really work into this. Really nice. <coughs> Not dark enough. I think I'm just doing some final lightening and just a bit of fixing. I like that colour there. Need to lift that out. Lighten there. Definitely lighten just across the eyebrow. Maybe just a little bit across the head there. That's better. That's definitely lighten under here. Need to reshape that actually because the face goes. That. Is that better? <coughs> better. I've just brought that face shape back. Which
Now I can work on this bit down here. Let that do its job. So this is just the claro. Definitely like that colour. I was trying to take away that very bright yellow. Mouth is just a bit come on, there we go, that's nice. Let's see how clean I can get my brush because I need to do some cleaning up. So this area has gone over. So I should be able to lift it out. The trick is to keep a white, a clean brush. So dyes will stain, but I do have some control and lifting. No, I don't like this, it's too solid. Done, blended that out. I am going to put one little bit more colour in just to lighten. Some up there, it's not gone. I want that bleeding characteristic. I do tend to find I may put a bit too much colour on, but this at the end will suddenly bring it back because the yellow underneath was quite staining. I think I'm missing the shape of the face, so chin comes round here and comes round there, then the neck comes round here. Okay, and then the shoulder comes there. It's a nicer colour there. can lift off like that. Go. And now I can just fix that. I lost where it was going so that the face comes up here. I haven't got any more. That's the shape of under the jaw. It's better. Face comes in there. Need to darken that a little bit. Then she's got a neck which comes round there. some clean and then I'm going to 
hopefully while I'm doing this it's drying in the areas I want to fix that shape of the face much better happier with that still need to lighten that like I say I do tend to sometimes put quite a lot of color on because it's this bit that will suddenly make it come to life and it just without the color I wouldn't be able to get all these lovely Effects. Definitely lighter here. So I am literally on the final stages. Definitely got a lovely light patch there. lighter so Go on, do your magic it's not right enough yet light patch there lightening Fairly happy with that. I mean, I could keep going and keep manipulating until I've got it completely 100% how I'd want it. But I, what I want to show you is how much you can do. So yes, it does bleed, but you can just see how much you can work on, move, manipulate the alcohol inks. still keep that characteristic so don't know if it's dry I know I've done not put any whiskers on I think that's dark enough In that area a little bit more black. I'm looking at the mouth I do need to try to avoid using the black too much because it's quite harsh the mouth comes around that there darker there Which is quite dark in this area. Quite dark on the edges there.
don't know how fine I'm going to get that. I'm getting some texture. So I can go in with a pen In. Might still be a bit wet in some areas. I have used the white um, in the alcohol inks, but it doesn't get this really lovely white finish that I get with this gel pen. pick up any areas that might need a little bit of detail yeah. so in one stage it looked quite messy but I knew I could bring it back Too much there. I'm going to just leave it because I think that's worked quite well. I just wanted to show you how alcohol ink does have a mind of its own, but how you can really manipulate it and bring it back and forth and back and forth. So those people that tend to overwork you with alcohol inks you can though it is difficult because it moves on the surface you can go into it come back out again bring it back like i say i probably would still keep working but sometimes you have to stop leave it and actually find out that it's it's worked pretty well i love these colors it's this texture that you don't get with paint which you can get with alcohol ink so I hope you enjoyed that and join me again soon for another demonstration. <laughs>